This video is designed to accompany the protocol Panel Optimization for High Dimensional Immunophenotyping Assays Using Full Spectrum Flow Cytometry. This is video 3, which follows Basic Protocol 3, Evaluation of Marker Resolution. So for this protocol, I'm working in a data analysis software package. So I'm using Flojo version 10. You can use any other software package that you like. And what I have done is opened up all of my single stained cell controls as well as my full stained sample. I'm then going to go through and follow those basic data cleanup steps that we followed in basic protocol 2, uh, also shown in video 2. So let's open up one of my samples. And the first thing I'm going to do is to gate based on time. I want to remove any unstable flow, but you can see here that this is a very nice clean acquisition. So I'm happy to take all of these events. So the first thing to do then is to remove doublets. So first I'll plot forward scatter area versus forward scatter height taking only the diagonal population. Drilling down from here, we're going to repeat using side scatter. Drilling down from here, I'm going to exclude my dead cells. This would also be a time to gate out aggregates, but as I showed in the previous protocol, this was a very clean prep that didn't have any aggregates in it, so we're going to skip that step. So... Removing dead cells. Obviously, this is a single stained sample that I'm setting my gates on, but for the fully stained sample, um, there will be viability dye to remove our dead cells. So it is. Oops. So I will set the gates here, um, but it is likely that I will need to adjust them based on my full stained. Drilling down from here, we're going to gate on cells of interest by plotting forward scatter versus side scatter and just taking the lymphocytes. And all of our analysis is going to come from this population here. Once I have applied all of those gates to all of my samples, then I'm ready to compare the resolution of my single stain versus my full stain. To do this, we're going to open up the layout editor and we're going to create a histogram for every single, uh, single stain control that we have using my clean cells of interest. I will plot that and we just want a histogram of that marker. I'll create a series of histograms making sure to change the parameter on the x-axis to match the sample that we just dragged in. So that was my BV650 control. So I want to make sure I put BV650 on that x-axis. 
and so on and so forth until we have a histogram for every single marker like so if we increase this size a little we can see it a little better so here I have a histogram for every single marker in the panel you can see in most uh, samples it's quite obvious where the positive is but in some cases where the positive is rare um, this histogram becomes quite hard to see uh, the positive versus the negative so we can uh, change this chart to be a dot plot rather than a histogram and that will show us um, the events a little bit more clearly. Then what we're going to do is take our full stained sample, here it is, and drag that same cells of interest population on top so that we can overlay our single stain with our full stain. And we want to overlay this one population onto every single bit. Once you've created your overlays, it's then time to inspect them to see how your resolution looks. So you can see here that the light blue colour is my full stained sample and the red is my single stained sample. So what we're looking for is any loss in resolution between our positive and negative population. And hopefully what we're going to see is almost direct overlap between the two samples. There will be slight differences of course in a lot of places, um, but we're hoping that the distance between positive and negative hasn't reduced at all. Um, let's change this one to a dot plot so we can more easily see population. There we go. Now we can see the positive a little bit more clearly. So you want to check every marker in the panel to make sure you're not losing too much resolution, or if you are, um, then we can investigate what's happening. Okay, in this one, let's change it to a dot plot so we can more easily see our positive versus our negative. So our positives are coming up here, and our single stain and full stain are looking pretty well overlaid. And one of the main things that we're looking for in this process is whether the negative population is getting wider or not. Um, often when fluorophores are combined together they increase spread to each other and so your negative population broadens and becomes wider and thus decreases the distance between positive and negative. So looking at these negative peaks in particular we can see sometimes that they broaden out a little and if we change this to a dot plot we can see whether this is going to impact our ability to see positive from negative. And you can see that it in fact isn't, it's just a slight broadening up the top here, but we can still see our positive population coming out to the right, no problem. Again okay, here, this one's gotten quite broad, but it's not at all impacting that resolution between positive and negative. What we also want to check alongside any spreading of the negative population is any reduction in staining of the positive population. So as you can see in a lot of these plots, the positive population of the fully stained sample maps perfectly on top of where the single stained sample sits. However, in some of these plots, there's a slight reduction in staining in our fully stained sample compared to our single stained sample. And basically a decision needs to be made as to whether this loss of staining is going to be problematic um, or whether the titer needs to be increased or sequential staining needs to be looked into to get this level of staining in the fully stained up to what we see in the single stained sample. But in all of these examples which we have here, the resolution isn't decreased so much that an issue in gating would be had. Um, so it's not too much of a problem that there's a slight reduction in staining of our fully stained sample.
Great, I'm happy with the resolution of our fully stained sample, so no further changes need to be made to this panel. The last thing to do um, is to see whether we can improve some of this resolution using autofluorescence extraction, and that will be discussed in the next video.